Now we will begin by looking at the transform boundary. It's probably the easiest to understand. In a transform boundary, we see that there is a fault line between two different plates. And this fault line will cause the two plates to slide past each other. A good example of this is the west coast of California, the San Andreas Fault, where you have the two arrows pointing in different directions and the plates will slide past each other. And this creates no volcanoes, no mountains, no eruptions. There's no magma seeping out of the crack. The plates just simply move past each other. And we see this in the animation in which the plates have moved. And this does create, though, a very big earthquake. This type of movement is called a conservative boundary. And that's because nothing is created or destroyed, only conserved. And here's a real photo showing the California San Andreas Fault boundary where the land has slid past each other, creating no mountain chains, no volcanoes. The other type of boundary is a divergent boundary. The word die means two. And if you diverging, you have two things moving apart. Hence the name divergent. This is very common when we have new land forming between two moving plates that are moving in opposite directions. The best known example is the mid-ocean ridge where you have a new crust being formed every time the plates diverge or move apart. And in the photo we can see that this is what's driven South America and Africa apart. This large mid-ocean ridge that divides the Atlantic Ocean. And we have seen from past evidence the magnetism on either side of the mid-ocean ridge is symmetrical, proving that they have been moving apart for millions of years. And a divergent boundary is known as a constructive boundary. Construct means to make, and that makes sense because we are making new crust every time the plates diverge. Here's a photo of Iceland where this, this fault line has moved apart between them, we have new crust forming. The rock here would be new or relatively young compared to the rest of the island. Now, this divergent boundary can be on land, and when we see it on land, we call it a rift. But when it diverges underwater, we just call it a ridge. However, they mean the same thing. Now, converge is a bit more complicated. There are can be three types of convergent boundaries. We can see from the name converge, it means to come together. And we have three types of boundaries that can come together. The first one is an ocean colliding with a continent. The second one is an ocean colliding with another ocean crust. The final one we'll look at is the continental crust colliding with another continental crust. All of them are examples of converging plate boundaries. We will start by looking at the ocean continent convergent boundary. The oceanic crust is much thinner, but it's also more dense. And when it collides or converges with the oceanic crust, it will subduct. Subduct, of course, means go below the other crust. And it will cause the crust to go down into the mantle and obviously create some collision where big earthquakes occur, but it also causes the continental crust to crumble upwards, creating mountains and volcanoes with the added pressure from the magma below. So this type of convergence creates all three, the volcanoes, a mountain chain, and earthquakes. Here's an example of what we call a destructive boundary. We are removing the oceanic crust, therefore it's being destroyed and it is becoming molten material which will eventually rise up in the form of a volcano. Now at one time you could be having a plate diverging creating a mid-ocean ridge where somewhere else on the earth the end of that plate could be subducting in the case of a divergent plate boundaries. So they occur simultaneously in one region you can have one type of movement. In a different region on Earth, you can have a different type of movement. Now the next type of divergent boundary is ocean colliding with ocean. 
Now, they are fairly close in density. Of course, they're both oceanic crust. But it's generally the faster mover moving one that does subduct and go below. Now, of course, there was nothing there before that was visible. However, when one does subduct under the other, an island chain starts to form. And it's a volcanic island chain because, of course, the subducting ocean crust will melt and create more magma and more pressure. And out comes a chain of islands. And that's how Japan was formed and Indonesia. And they're still active today because the ocean crust continues to subduct below it. Here's a photograph showing you a whole chain of islands formed through an ocean-ocean collision. We have uh, visible on the top right Alaska and on the upper left hand side is Russia. And we have a large trench where one crust subducted under another ocean crust and it formed a chain of the Aleutian Islands which at one time connected Alaska to Russia and it was easy to walk until all of that uh, was fairly eroded away and again towards the left there you see uh, Japan and Indonesia all formed when the ocean crust subducted underneath ocean crust forming a big island arc or what we call an ocean island chain. And here's a photo of Nicaragua, a chain of islands that were never there before. However, with an ocean-ocean collision, up comes a volcanic chain of islands from an ocean-ocean divergent boundary. Now I've used the word trench before. Trenches occur anywhere there is subduction. So it can happen with an ocean continent subduction or ocean-ocean subduction. And a trench is where the land starts to dive below the ocean crust. It forms a very deep depression in the ocean floor. Of course, it does fill up with magma, um, but it is a very deep depression. And uh, one of the famous ones and deepest ones is Marianas Trench, which is um, near the Philippine Islands on the left. So we can see that there's trenches along North and South America, where the ocean crust is subducting underneath the continent. But we also see it on the ocean floor uh, in the Asia Pacific region where ocean is subducting under the ocean crust. The final type of divergent plate boundaries is continent-continent. This is where two large continents of the same density collide into each other. They're less dense. One does not subduct under and the other, they both collide and fold upwards, creating large mountain chains. There's no volcanoes, and that's because the plates don't subduct. They don't go underneath each other and create additional lava and magma to form. So that just creates the large mountains. Now, when did this happen? Well, believe it or not, India, a large continental island, at one time collided into the southern part of Asia and because it collided into another continental crust the two of them crumbled upwards forming the Himalaya mountains and we see the largest mountain here Mount Everest and of course because these plates are still moving um, towards each other that mountain is still growing there's no volcanoes here of course as there was no subduction